There is no garbage in nature. In the living world, everything that dies becomes food for something else. Then came man, and in order to survive, we needed food, shelter, and clothing. In time, we transformed those basic needs into the signifiers of our wealth, status, and identity, and clothing became fashion. We made more of our needs than we needed, so much more that man invented the idea of waste. Garbage is a man-made thing. But let's get back to fashion. The global industry employs 65 million people, producing more than 80 billion new clothing items every year. Because fast fashion, that's an increase of 400% in the last 20 years. That has created some significant unintended consequences. The industry produces nearly 10% of the world's greenhouse gases, more than the airline and shipping industries combined. The average consumer wears a quarter of their wardrobe, meaning the majority of the clothes they buy are never worn. Of that, 87% of the clothing we buy is discarded within three years of its original purchase. That's the equivalent of one full garbage truck of clothing being landfilled or incinerated every second of every day. For all its power, fashion now is a system that makes things for consumers to mostly throw away. You might imagine systems that look like this, but it's not that simple. Global fashion is a network of design houses, material suppliers, manufacturers, and retailers, inseparable from a consumer who is driven by their own impulses. So how did we get here? In the recovery from World War II, industry and governments advanced consumption as the mechanism to rebuild the economies of the Western world. The colossal shift away from rural life towards urban living that followed required new man-made systems that were designed with little thought to the systems of nature. The American economist Victor Lebeau worried in 1955 that our enormously productive economy demands that we make consumption our way of life. That economy shaped the world in ways that would have been unimaginable in 1955. Consumption and what is required to feed it created what biologists in the 1970s named the Anthropocene. The Anthropocene is the era we have entered. It's the time when the activities of man have the power to change the systems of nature. Nature is circular and regenerative. Over billions of years, nature has perfected complex webs of interdependence, tiny universes we call ecosystems. Where nothing is wasted, and every part relies on the sustained success of every other. But the systems of the man-made world are mostly linear. Those systems are designed to extract raw materials from the earth to make things, so that we can throw them away. Pretty ugly is the work of Tara Morris, a fashion designer and strategist with 25 years of experience making clothing in countries around the world. And Tian Yue Zhang, a designer trained in sociology and the study of human behaviors. Sustainability is defined as the maintenance of natural resources over time. So our assumption at the beginning of this work was that maybe the industry and consumers lack the tools or blueprints to guide better outcomes. But not so. One of the earliest sustainable design tools was published in the mid 1990s. And since then, a steady stream of campaigns, brand promises, and global pacts have followed. It seems that fashion has positioned sustainability as a response to the growing environmental unease people are feeling, as the impacts of climate change become harder to ignore. The word sustainability spiked in use in the last decade, and sustainable fashion was one of the most searched tags of 2019. But while we talk about sustainability more and more, we refer to nature less and less. As this graph of the last century shows, it seems that we don't think about nature anymore. For all the hype and hashtags, sustainability in fashion has come to mean a different and aspirational purchase. But it's still a purchase. If not nature, then sustainability is simply more consumption. And that led us to this question: How might we radically rethink sustainability in fashion, in order to drive brands and consumers towards a regenerative future that acknowledges the interdependence of man and nature?
That question drove our strategy. Because of the scale of this topic, we've blended hard research with design and art making at every stage of our work. At the center is our philosophy that there is no garbage in nature. From there, our work operates in three strategic spaces, education, communication, and mobilization. Pretty Ugly started building our voice and community through Instagram in 2019. Our first design was the Manning Lab, an event for people to learn clothing repair skills that surprised us by becoming the seed of our community. We followed with the Material Lab, a panel conversation specifically for fashion professionals. We learned that even inside the industry, consensus of what sustainability means differs widely. Pretty Ugly began public speaking directly to brands and designers in New York City, finding that our philosophy and view feel different and urgent for people. The Daily Dissenter was an art and activation photo series we shot during New York Fashion Week to play with another way of communicating through image making and pop culture. At this point, it's worth noting that the fashion industry has largely positioned sustainability roles within the supply chain and marketing teams. The irony is that fashion is a creative industry powered by designers, but for the most part, designers are not in positions of power to influence decision-making and the radical thinking this moment requires. And that has consequences in how designers feel about their work. So we hosted the Designers Workshop, an event for working fashion designers to visualize their collective feelings and frustrations, map their personal assets and barriers, and to prototype some radical redesign of the fashion system. Again, we bumped into this palpable need people have to create an organized community for change. It's this work to understand and activate the power of designers that will be the focus of our work in the immediate future. Like everyone else, our work and the events we had planned were interrupted by the global pandemic. The desire for fashion stopped almost overnight when the only clothing item we all seem to need is a mask. Right now, the global retail industry is projecting losses of over $2 trillion, while supply chains are being disrupted in a way that they may never fully recover. Pretty Ugly used this time of pandemic to experiment with a small but radical redesign, I Mask New York. In early April, the state of New York required citizens to wear non-surgical masks out of doors for public safety. We saw this as a moment to experiment with new systems that are like nature and circular in their design. iMask New York is a zero waste prototype that is using the need for masks, available textile waste, and education about creative reuse and regeneration. IMASK New York is our way to be of service while using the needs of this moment to redesign bigger understandings in order to mobilize people. Over the past year, Pretty Ugly has created seven freestanding events. Excluding public speaking and street art, more than 60 people have participated in this work with hundreds more following on social media and receiving our newsletters. Pretty Ugly is actively communicating with fashion consumers and professionals and will continue working to bring new lab series and street-level art projects into the world. Ultimately, the aim of this project is to rewrite the shared understanding of sustainability in order to build the capacities that move people towards a redesign of the built world using nature as our guide. To view our work or to collaborate on future projects, we can be found at It's Pretty Ugly Official on Instagram and prettyuglyproject.com. Let's face it, there's a reason people love fashion. We love fashion, but the issues it presents demand our attention. It's Pretty Ugly.